good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well wherever you are. I'm here in Providence, Rhode Island, and it is Thanksgiving, and there's not a soul on the streets right now. I'm completely alone, it feels like. Um, we're gonna kind of wander around, shoot some more with the Yashica Mat 124G, give you guys a little bit more of this 6x6 goodness, uh, because I do really love this camera. But uh, yesterday I had an issue with it, and I thought for sure it spelled the demise of this beautiful camera. That's the end of the Yashica for now. <laughs> Nothing. It's advancing and it's not firing. I've gone through Yeah, it's just not doing anything. What the f Oh man, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, that one was uh, that one was my fault, turns out. I later found out after going home that I had the self-timer button here sort of half-cocked in a way. And basically what happens if it's not fully triggered and you take a shot, it tells the camera that the image was taken, but uh, it doesn't actually take the image. So you advance and you shoot, but the shutter never actually opens, uh, which is a big bummer. I lost an entire roll of Kodak Gold 200, which again, I'm shooting with today. It would have been so much worse if it was a roll of Kodak Portra 800. I would have been so, so bummed. But uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt as much when you're using a cheaper film which we're gonna talk about today. So like I mentioned, we're shooting with Kodak Gold 200. And the last time I shot this film was almost a year ago when it came out, or was it two years ago? My timeline's a little fuzzy. But I shot it a long time ago, and my initial impressions were I love the colors and the soft contrast, but I wasn't in love with its latitude and a lot of grain that was uh, showing in the images. It almost kind of looks like Portrait 800 when it comes to grain structure, but uh, without the, uh, the flexibility, of a higher speed film. So there were some drawbacks to this film, but one thing that I really love about it is the color rendition. It's absolutely perfect. And on a side note, for those who do develop at home or somebody who works at a lab, probably sees this more than somebody who doesn't. Uh, this film stock is really, really thin. And when you're trying to get it onto a reel, it has a really hard time picking it up. I use my Patterson tank to spool it onto my Patterson developing system and it really has a difficult time catching it. It's just a super, super thin film stock. I don't know much about emulsions. I'm not a professional in that sort of sense. Don't take my word for it. I assume that maybe the emulsion is just a little bit thinner or the celluloid itself is thinner. I don't know. There's a reason why it's cheaper and uh, it certainly feels cheap when you're developing it. And uh, that's probably my biggest pain when it comes to shooting this film is just having to spool it onto a tank and develop it at home. It's just kind of annoying. Oh, that guy would have been good for a photo, shit. So yesterday before my camera crapped out on me, or more accurately before I crapped out on my camera, I was able to get a couple of shots down by the river of this beautiful old eastern cottonwood that I absolutely fell in love with. So 
So we're out here in, uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. This is an area that I've, I photograph a lot. And I've come down to this area quite a bit and I've photographed, but I've never been able to see further into the woods. It seems like every time I come out here, it's either midwinter where there's like snow piled up or it's midsummer where there's just too much brush. And uh, for whatever reason, I've never been able to see this far down because I just assumed the highway was just off of this road. But uh, though that is true, the highway is just right there, there's a little river here that goes through and uh, there's a bunch of homeless encampments out here, which is really interesting. Nobody's in it now and it looks like no one's been around here for quite some time. But uh, when I came down here, what I didn't expect to see was this beautiful old tree that's kind of been branched out in a couple of different directions. It's very, very old. I would venture to say probably 70 years old. I can't get across over there, but diameter has been kind of close to what I've seen. The peak is not nearly as high, but in terms of like circumference, there's like a number of branches or kind of offshoots of the tree that look like they could all be equally the same age. So probably 60, 70 years old, knocked over, just started growing outward, but I think it's an Eastern cottonwood. Um, I photographed it on the GSW when I first came down here on Portrait 800, and then I just grabbed a quick shot on the 6x6, six six, which is not the best format to photograph this tree in. Um, but the truth is, uh, I didn't really want to load up another roll of film on the, on the GSW because it would be Kodak Gold 200 which is what I have in here. And I'm not a huge fan of this film. And I'm gonna be picking up more Portra 800 in the coming days, so I don't really wanna, I'll stick to this with the 400 or the 200. But crazy, I just, I'm, I'm baffled by this tree. I can't, I can't stop looking at it. I actually just took a shot of this cottonwood over here lining this tree and uh, just a little further down the way as I was walking up this road uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Bill from Florida he's up visiting some family and uh, I was able to grab two portraits of him that I was actually I think pretty happy with I think those are gonna be some of the better images from today um, just super happy I got one a little further back and then one of well, a little tighter closer head shot really, really harsh lighting, overexposed it by about a half a stop. So hopefully it retains enough detail. There's not a ton of latitude in this film like what we talked about earlier, but overexposing color negative film is always a better, uh, a better play than underexposing. So ultimately, I think I got a pretty decent shot. Pretty happy with it. It's starting to warm up now, not too cold. Let's keep walking. mentioned we're shooting Kodak Gold 200 around Providence today it's just gorgeous out there's like nobody around which is kind of a bummer I wanted to get some portraits but um, it's really nice and freeing and the great thing about this film is that you can really just shoot it without fear of wasting money that's the best part about this film I think that's why it's a budget-friendly consumer film stock it's why I still use it every once in a while uh, and why I decided to pick it up from Hunts the other day. It was only $35 for the Pro Pack, so kind of a no-brainer to pick it up. But uh, it's a nice change from shooting Portrait 400 and Portrait 800 so often because uh, those film stocks do get expensive after a while. And when, you, uh, when you're not exactly sure what you want to photograph and you just want to shoot, this is a great option. Kudos to Kodak for making a budget-friendly medium format color negative film stock. It, uh, it really goes a long way in helping the community, that's for sure. Especially on a day like today, I feel pretty, pretty happy with the images I've taken. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. 
I'm gonna go home. I gotta make some sides. It's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye. This backlighting over here, this backlighting over here is absolutely incredible. <laughs>